I just did something really stupid. And I don't normally do this, but I'm gonna walk you around the property here for just a moment because I have a walk ahead of me. And I'll tell you why here in a minute. But I did something foolish. It's not something you wanna ever do on your farm. When you do something like this on your farm, you're, you're asking for problems. And, um, and I don't like problems. I like things to go smooth and for things to happen like they're supposed to happen. By the way, look at this field, how good it looks. I've gotten a lot of bush hogging done here and for the spring grass, letting it get started good. Got a few trees right here that are white pine that need to be taken out. And uh, got my work cut out for me. On my way down here to show you what I did stupid, um, I'm gonna take you for a little bit of a walking tour and you'll understand why I'm having to walk when I get on down here. By the way, this right here is a groundhog hole and they're in my pasture, several places in the pasture. And uh, if there's anything you want to annihilate is the groundhogs. And I'm all about nature, all about wildlife, but the last thing I would want is for a groundhog to dig a hole through my dam and drain my lake, or for someone to step off in one of these groundhog holes and break an ankle because they're hidden quite well underneath underneath the grass I have a lot of grass and not just that but you can imagine if you're mowing grass especially with a bush hog and they have large blades and they're able to handle a lot but the one thing it makes it tough. Sorry, I'm using my stand like a selfie stick today. Um, Chevy's gonna go out here on the dock and check things out, see how much goose poop he can see. I think he's eating goose poop. Oh, check this out. This tree is putting out some new leaves right now. And this is a ginkgo tree a Japanese ginkgo tree. I planted four of them and it's got a crook in the bottom of it, as you can see. But the reason that it has a crook in it, there were four of them. This is the only one that survived. And the reason it survived is because I propped it back up. The bear dug up, we have bears here, black bear, about the same color as Chevy. And, um, but the black bear dug up all my apple trees that I planted. And he also dug up all the ginkgo trees and among other things as well. And uh, sorry, I'm on a long walk here. And uh, as you can see, wow, it was a hot one today. Starting to cool off now, it feels really good. And uh, those nice, cool spring days. I have been doing some cutting let me show you. I don't know if you can see it all from here. You can't, but I'll show you more here in a moment. Yes, that's the lake in the background. We've got about a two acre lake. It's about 18 feet deep on the far end. And on this end up here is where the streams come in. So the streams, very nice and clean beautiful water, crystal clear. Ah, the only animals that we allow in the lake is my dog and the wildlife. So we don't graze any of the, and we're not ever going to graze any of the animals in our water system. Uh, we have a pump system in the lake 
as you can see i installed it right here there's still some work to be done and uh which pumps water out of the lake for any irrigation and to uh use as a water source for the for the animals and i and i chose that the reason I chose that is because I don't want the animals defecating in the lake. We swim in the lake. Yes, there's going to be some geese, some wild ducks and wild geese. Oh, I got to show you this before I pass it up. Hold on, hold on. This is like a little tour today. This is going to be in a video here in about a week or so this is a large flaming wild azalea nature natural wild look at these blooms that are setting up they're going to be bright orange blooms gorgeous it's my favorite wildflower now yes we have obviously dogwoods that are blooming like crazy you can see them here i didn't plant these trees by the way these are all just natural look at all the nice beautiful tender leaves beautiful flowers on the dogwoods <sighs> my i've been short of breath since these allergies have kicked in but i'm doing okay these are new blooms that are going to be coming out on the mountain laurel we have mountain laurel everywhere see all this mountain laurel is going to be blooming here soon it's my old campsite down here you can see some of the other dogwoods back here in the background this bush here is a wild blueberry we have wild huckleberries we have wild blueberries as well all these trees above us here all these are maples over the campsite at the head of the lake this bush here believe it or not is a wild cherokee rose they're invasive they're wild here to the appalachian mountains and it's fine they put out a beautiful smell a beautiful scent i love them i absolutely love them but they grow in areas where i don't want them hey shift shift this is my buddy. Now, what did I do stupid? Let me tell you what I did stupid. I was mowing here today, bush hogging. I have a lot, a lot of acreage, a lot of fields, healthy grass. This is just April, folks. And I've already mowed grass down that was about 16 inches tall. A lot of grass. That's my brother's. It's my brother's coach that he's got there. And you can see my garden up behind the coach up in the valley. So you can probably hear a little bit of a rattle, a grumble, a little bit of a engine noise in the background. It's a diesel engine. I'll tell you what I did stupid, really stupid. By the way, this is a pile of old locust posts and uh they don't rot they won't rot away in my lifetime i got these probably about 10 or 15 years ago and i keep moving them i'm gonna use them for some rustic posts that i'm gonna put up soon yeah i'm showing you my piled up garbage here but it's not garbage So, yes, I'm walking and I'm walking and I'm walking. I love the walk. I love it. Now, you hear the tractor? I tell you what I did. This was the stupidest thing for me to do, but I did it. I'm embarrassed to even say it. The one thing that every guy 
is embarrassed to say is he run out of fuel. And I ran out of fuel today, right there. So I drove my truck down here, filled it up with fuel, had to drive the truck up and down the valley, all the way back to one of the hillsides where the cabin is, park the truck, let this rent run for about 15 minutes to make sure it had any had any dirt in the line whatever ever, I can clean it out in the morning but the one thing that happens when you run out of fuel when it's diesel compared to gasoline is you you face the risk you face the risk of bleeding the injectors before you can actually start it back up Luckily, luckily, as soon as I knew that it was running out of fuel, I turned the switch off and it left a little fuel in the line. Thankfully, it left a little fuel in the line. It was a miracle that it had any in it, but it didn't drain, didn't drain the catch basins. Therefore, when I tried to crank it back up, it took about four or five tries to crank it back up, but it cranked back up started perfectly but i wanted to run it for just a few minutes while i drove my truck to the top of the hill about half a mile from here and um and then i i'm coming back down to get the tractor and i'll ride the tractor back up so uh that's one thing that you just never do and the reason you don't because you can put a lot of trash into your system because every diesel fuel is probably the most unclean fuel that you can imagine compared to gasoline it's very unclean it's dirty fuel most of the time um, i usually do not run off-road diesel in the tractor i usually run highway diesel which is a blue color uh, they put a dye in the diesel i don't know if you've ever pumped diesel before or not but you have a red dye in the off-road and a blue dye in the on-road and the on-road has taxes that you pay because you basically have road tax. Farmers uh, and equipment operators have the ability to use the red fuel, which is the off-road. It's a little bit cheaper and it has a higher sulfur content in it as well, like the old diesel. And occasionally what I'll do, I'll run the red diesel, the off-road in it, about once every three fill-ups. It's higher in sulfur and it also helps lubricate all of the uh, the parts inside where the injectors go into the compression area so don't want to get it complicated here technical but diesel is a good way to go especially when you're purchasing a farm tractor this is a John Deere it's a 50 something uh, horsepower it's a good size it's not too big not too small um, got different attachments for the front end front end loader bucket forklift so on and so on a lot of different attachments for the back end it doesn't have all uh, John Deere branded attachments for the rear I do have different brands I do have some John Deere attachments but for the front and back but I have some that are not because uh, John Deere is quite expensive compared to other brands and this is actually in my opinion a better brand for a bush hog than John Deere is the attachment on the back as you, as you see it's red it's not green it's actually a bush hog the brand bush hog which has been a true tried tried and true great piece of machinery for my lifetime and my father's lifetime been around for a long time and they're hard to beat when it comes to bush hogging the brand bush hog so I have a bush hog bush hog a bush hog brand bush hog now I will be free ranging some chickens on this bottom down here okay and you're gonna say how big is the bottom I don't know if you realize how far I walked here in the last minute or two I was walking fairly fast so I was out of breath again you can see my garden up here behind this knoll it goes all up in that valley that's about a little about a half acre farm uh, garden about a half acre garden and um, the tractor as you can see is sitting next to the three walnut trees these walnut trees were here when i purchased the property 21 years ago there's a few trees behind it you can see that i planted 
that are from the nuts off of these trees. And they're about six, seven, eight inches deep or, or through, you know, as far as the, the size of the trunk of their trees way back there. But these walnut trees that the tractor is sitting next to are right around 20, 24 inches in diameter. That's, that's some good walnut trees, big ones. And they go way up in the air, as you can see. I'm not sure if you can hear me over this tractor noise. That's why I'm kind of talking a little bit loud. Um, but I wanted to share with you what I did stupid. I let it run out of fuel. Don't let your diesel um, vehicle, your diesel equipment, your diesel tractors, your diesel anything run out of fuel. Make sure you keep a watch on those gauges. In my situation, I had a, a hired farmhand that I had up here for the last couple of years that had been helping me. And um, he did some work on it where some rodents had got up underneath my hood and chewed some wires into. He replaced it, fixed it, but for some reason, the fuel gauge, the panel behind it has a little bit of a wave in it and the needle catches and it doesn't always give me the correct reading. Not his fault. Um, he fixed it the best he could for, for the parts that I got for him, but I probably need to replace the dash back panel. Um, that will cause everything to work properly and I'll be able to read the, the dials better. Anyone that works equipment need to be able to do that. It's foolish on my part, a mistake on my part, of not fixing that before riding around here and running out of fuel, thinking that I had enough fuel to run on. Now, these are very efficient, even though they have a lot of torque, a lot of power, they're very efficient and you think you've got enough fuel because you can take five gallons and you can get in this thing and you can ride it for five, six, seven hours at high RPMs because you have to have those RPMs at a high RPM to run the attachments that have the power takeoff attached to them, such as a bush hog. You have to keep that engine revved up you think, well, that's gonna burn a lot of fuel. They don't burn a lot of fuel. Now, if that was a gasoline uh, engine, I would be filling it up several times a day. I can put 10 gallons of fuel in this tractor. And I've got this one and I've got a smaller one that's 25 horsepower. This one here, even though it has 50 something horsepower, I can drive on 10 gallons of fuel all weekend long while I'm bush hogging, doing different things and just keeping it running. I can put hours and hours and hours on it, a lot. It's amazing. If they made cars with that much efficiency, it would be great, it'd be great. But you also don't have the ability with the gears to be able to change gears. This is not a hydrostatic. My other tractor is a hydrostatic. So hydrostatic doesn't have the same gear makeup that this does. This has uh, two gear sticks, one on the right, one on the left. The one on the right has different speeds, one through five. And that's all, not just speeds, I'm not talking about speed, I'm talking about five gears on the right. In other words, if it's on one, it's what we call grandma gear. If it's on five, I mean, you're, you're moving on. I mean, you're going down the highway and you wanna make some time. On the left, you've got reverse and forward. Regular reverse, regular forward, okay? And then you can pull it over to the left a little further and you actually have um, a forward that is even a higher gear. So if you've got it on five here and you've got it on the faster gear on the left, it is going to really move on. So you gotta be careful with these types of equipment. But because it doesn't change gears by itself or it doesn't have the ability when you're going to change gears, from one gear to another. You have to stop and change the gear and then move forward. That's the way all tractors are that's been made for years and years, unless they're hydrostatic or unless they're automatic. I don't like automatics. I'm okay with hydrostatic for the smaller tractors, but not for this one here, not for the bigger ones. The bigger ones need to have the torque. They don't need to have any interruption. They don't need to have any power sucked from what they're trying to get done. This is a much more powerful, better horsepower ratio to do it this way. So hope this gives you a little bit of a, a clue, but the one thing you don't wanna do is be stupid like I was today and make such a mistake and allow it to run out of fuel 
And thank goodness I did not have to bleed the injectors. I'm so happy about that. Very happy about that. So anyway, let me um, let me get this tractor back up to the top. Oh, I want to show you something else right here, real quick. I've got so many things. I'm always going on tangents, showing you different different things. At the base of this walnut tree, I told you it's huge. Look at this. All of them are huge. These are huge. This is wild. Not wild. I'm going to say they were probably planted here years ago. These are raspberries. Raspberries. It won't be long before I'll see raspberries coming out on these. I'm very, very happy about that. Very happy about that. So, all right. Thank you so much for being part of the Welch Family Homestead. This is my project down this side here. I stored a bunch of old lumber and piled wood here 11, 12, 15 years ago. This is all gonna turn into a big bonfire. We're gonna do a lot of cleaning here, but I've gotta go through it because I have a lot of material in there that's still good pulled out some fence posts some pressure treated fence posts and some other things the other day and I have a lot more to pull out and then I'm going to expand this pasture all the way over to the water we have a, a spring coming down this edge here and when we do that I'll do a video about it it's gonna be fun we're gonna take out a few trees we're gonna shape it just right we're going to put a couple bridges across it, walking trails. It's just going to be a blast to see what happens here on Welch Family Homestead. Thank you and hope that my mistakes help you to be better.